Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to create fast formulations. Now there's one thing big and small brands have in common and it's a constant challenge and that's to get to market as fast as possible with a product that meets quality requirements. Now in a typical development from concept through to launch, even if everything goes perfectly along the development pathway, and let's face it, that rarely happens, you're looking at a minimum of nine months. Now this just isn't acceptable in a lot of cases, especially if you're trying to keep up with trends in the marketplace. So how can you do this? Well, you create some really stable chassis bases. And that's the topic of this video. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is showing you how to create not just one, but two different, extremely stable base chassis products. So also, what am I talking about here? Well, one of the things I'm gonna be doing with these base products, I'm gonna be making a cheap synthetic version and I'm using materials that both big and small brands can access easily. So I'm gonna give you lots of solutions today. The other formula I'm creating is a green version. Yes, I've got something for everyone in this video. And again, I'm using materials that both big and small brands can access easily, which also means they're going to meet your base budget. The other thing about a fast formulation is it needs to be able to handle just about any sort of active you wanna throw in it. So you're going to see me use materials that are very tolerant of even some extreme conditions. And I'm doing this so that we have a very stable base, but so that we can also put a variety of different actives in with relative confidence that our stability is not going to be affected. So as I go through each of these formulation developments, I'll be talking you through the materials and what you can swap out if you choose to use other materials in their place. And I'll be emphasizing what you need to be looking for if you choose to use different materials to what I've used here. So let's get started. So now what I have here, this is the cheap synthetic version. We're gonna start with this product uh, and then I'll show you the natural version. Now one of the first things we need to do is make a really stable base product by using a gum or polymer. Now in this case, I'm using hydroxyethyl cellulose. Again, you could use a different material if you want, but one of the reasons I've used this material is because it's very cheap, uh, it's very effective, it will help build some base stability into my emulsion product, and it's readily available. Now you'll also notice I'm using very basic equipment. I'm doing this for the small brands out there that don't have access to a lab. If you have access to a lab, great, use some more fancy equipment. But the point of this video is to show you just how stable and reliable these base formulas are, even without fancy equipment. So one of the tips and tricks I wanna show you here, you could of course uh, use high shear to hydrate this. I'm going to bring the pH of this up just so that we can get it to hydrate fast. Now you will have noticed how quickly the hydroxyethyl cellulose hydrated when I alkalized it a little. I didn't even measure a pH, I just simply made sure that pH was well above seven and it's hydrated very quickly. So that's a tip you can use. Now if you wanted to, you don't have to use the alkalizing material, you can just high shear for a prolonged period. One of the things you'll notice as well, because I didn't even measure the pH, we can bring this pH back down later. In fact, we will at the end. Uh, but the point here as well is it's not affected by pH and it's not affected by electrolytes so far. Two very important aspects of our base chassis already that we've ticked the box. So I'm gonna heat this up and then I have my oil phase here and I'm adding a very reliable non-ionic emulsifier. Now I'm using a non-ionic emulsifier again so that it is uh, electrolyte resistant and it's also tolerant 
of big changes in pH. So again, I'm making a base formula. I could use this formula and put an active in there that is very acidic, for example, and this formula will still hold together. I could add an active that might raise the pH. It will still be stable. That is the point of fast formulation. It needs to be able to handle just about any active and still be reliably stable. So now I'm just going to heat and make my emulsion as normal. Now, once this has cooled below 40 degrees, I can add my preservative and my antioxidant. Now we're adding antioxidant into this formula, even though the materials in this formula aren't prone to oxidation, you could be adding an active later that could oxidize or be prone to oxidation, or you may wanna change the lipids I've used, for example, and they could be prone to oxidation. So I've got an antioxidant built into the base chassis so that you have antioxidant protection in case you need it. And of course, consumers love seeing uh, tocopherol or vitamin E on their label. Uh, remember, the tocopherol is the one that helps provide antioxidant protection on your formula. Tocopherol acetate does not protect your formula. So you need to use the tocopherol to protect this base chassis. I've also used a readily available preservative that will tolerate pH moving over a relatively broad range. It is broad spectrum and very reliable, so I have that in the formula as well. So let's run through a couple of concepts built into this formula that will help tolerate just about anything you want to add to it. Number one, I've used a polymer to help support the stability of this formula. It will also help support any sort of particles you might want to add for effects as well. I've used a simple and cheap, commonly available humectant so that you have humectant properties in the base formulation. I've used a non-ionic high HLB emulsifier blend that is waxy to build body to the cream base and also make sure it is very tolerant of electrolytes or pH changes from any actives you may want to use. I've used a very simple and readily available lipid in this formula, but you could change that for other lipids because I do have antioxidant present as well in case you use materials that are prone to oxidation. And of course, I've already talked about the preservative being able to tolerate pH drift over time or because of an active that you add to the formula. So there's a lot of stability enhancing materials I've built into this formula. And of course you can see they are non-ionic and relatively inert. So you could add just about any active to this formula. You will still have a stable and viscous emulsion product and you can manipulate the way it feels by changing the lipids because you've got plenty of flexibility to do that. Now let's take a look at how we're going to do this using only green materials. Okay, first of all, I have my glycerin here and I am going to slurry my gum into my glycerin. Now I'm using a very stable gum material here. It does cost a little more, but it will handle a range of pH conditions, but it does take a little while to thicken up. So you may find you make product today, but have to give it a final stir tomorrow to ensure this is homogenous. Now I've also used this particular material because it doesn't have a tacky finish. So you won't be impacted by skin feel. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see I use xanthan gum a lot. I really like xanthan gum, uh, but in this particular case, we want a material that is more pH tolerant than xanthan gum. And also we wanna build stability uh, into this formulation without residual tack, which can happen. You can get a lot of tackiness from cheap grades of xanthan gum. So I've opted not to use that in this formula, just so we have uh, improvements to the sensory aspects. And we also have greater formulation flexibility. So again, we can add just about any active into this base. If the pH goes up a lot, if the pH goes down a lot because of the active, this particular gum will tolerate that kind of shift and still provide its full stabilizing and viscosity benefits. 
Now, as I mentioned, this will take a little while to thicken. So it's common to make the product today and then give it another stir tomorrow before packing off. You'll see it hasn't hydrated effectively there. You can even see it around the edge uh, of the bowl. So if this happens for you, it's quite normal with this particular material. Uh, I'm a big fan if you're building a base chassis and you want good stability, good reliability from the base, then this is the gum you should be using, even though it does cost a little more. So now while I heat that up, I've got my oil phase here. Now one of the problems you have when making a green product is getting it to have a good creamy consistency. So I've again used a very reliable high HLB non-ionic emulsifier blend in here that builds base stability. But here I'm also adding a high HLB non-ionic emulsifier and a low HLB non-ionic emulsifier. Why am I doing this? because I need to build viscosity into my cream. How do I do that effectively without it being affected by climate or extremes in temperature? In my emulsifying waxes. So I'm adding those. The low HLB material also helps prevent excess white rub-in time. If you've ever worked with green emulsifiers, you'll know you generally need more of your green emulsifier to build the viscosity up to a creamy consistency. But in adding more emulsifier, you risk having excess white rubbing time. That soapy effect that makes it look like a product takes a long time to absorb into the skin. So we're avoiding that by using a small amount of low HLB emulsifier in combination with my high HLB emulsifiers. That way I've got plenty of waxy emulsifier build in the formula, uh, but I won't have excess white rubbing time. And this of course also helps build viscosity and stability into the product because it is helping to balance out the HLB value of this formula for excellent sensory and good stability. So now I'm just going to heat and emulsify as normal. Now remember, full viscosity and stability of this product will be achieved the next day, and that's a lot to do with the gum and also the waxes we've used. They do need to set overnight to build that viscosity properly. Of course, when this is cooled below 40 degrees, we would add the preservative and antioxidant. Again, I haven't used materials in this formula that will oxidize, but I'm adding antioxidant so that if I add actives or I change the lipids or if I use essential oils that need antioxidant protection, the antioxidant is already present. In other words, I'm foolproofing this base chassis. And that's what fast formulation development is about, really. It's about foolproofing the base chassis so that you can put just about any active into the base and it's not gonna cause it to thin irreversibly. It's not gonna cause it to separate. And it means you have relative confidence that your product's gonna have a good shelf life without having to run the full stability tests. You could use either of these bases as they are, the same materials I've used, and go to market in as small as three months with relative confidence that your product will last a full two to three years. The particular base chassis I've shown you today, I have run extensive stability testing on in adverse conditions with adverse actives present for nine months accelerated, which means you can take them as they are and have that same sort of confidence. If you change any of the materials I've used, please make sure you run stability on your base chassis to get the same results before you head to market. So when you've got that kind of confidence in your base chassis under extreme conditions, it means you can create your formulas, put an active in there, check it for a very short amount of time and then get your bulk manufactured and out to market fast with relative confidence that it will give you a full two to three year shelf life without having to wait nine months. Like I say, you use either of these bases, exactly the same materials that I've used. In most cases, you'll be to market within three months with your active added with relative confidence. 
This doesn't mean you can just go to market with these base chassis and your actives added as a guarantee because accelerated stability is never a guarantee. So you should be conducting real time and accelerated testing with your actives added as a backup to make sure. But the point of these fast formulation developments and the initial stability I've conducted means you can go to market fast with a high degree of confidence with just about any active added. Make sure you still do the stability, especially if you change any of the ingredients I've used, but hopefully you've seen just how easy it is to create these products, even with basic equipment, with the materials I've provided you in the formulations because I've picked materials that just about any company can access easily. And the basic equipment I've used shows you just how reliable those materials are to create beautiful emulsion products. So now you've got your solution, it's up to you to get creative and add those actives, run some preliminary stability, make sure you get your desired results and get to market fast. Happy formulating.